Hi everyone, it's Holly from AskHollyHall.com. Today we're going to talk about the full moon that's coming on the 20th of February. This is a very important full moon because this is about friend or foe, family and fate, drama and distance. I want to be the most important person. I want to make sure I have all my friends. Oh, party hardy. But the most important part is about humanity and who you are as an individual in the world. I'm going to give you a rundown sign by sign. Now remember, I do Vedic astrology, which is a sidereal astrology. That puts us about 24 degrees behind schedule. But it doesn't really matter whether you follow Western or Vedic because you will inhabit one of these signs in your chart. So, for instance, in Western astrology, I'm a Virgo. In Vedic astrology, I'm a Leo. That's my sun sign. But I have two planets in Virgo and two planets in Leo in either one. So I'm going to relate to both. Are you ready? Let's start off with Aries. Aries, this falls into the house of family, creativity, fun, romance, but also with friends. So is your family, are they your friends? Do you find that you wish some of your friends were your family? Or do you have a group of friends that you treat as if they are your family? You protect them. You're a warrior for them. You stand up for them. You got their back. But you're realizing this weekend that who's got your back? Who's there for you? Who's fighting for you? Does that make you want to take down your shield or your sword? I'm no longer going to fight for them. What do they do for me? That's the ego. And that's where you want to be very careful with this energy this weekend. Is it ego? Is it because you want your needs met? So you no longer want to fight for others. Or are you maybe constantly going to uncharted territories? People aren't asking you to battle for them or fight for them. This is something that you want to really take a deep spiritual look at. Otherwise, it's going to be all about desire, all about me, and all about needs being met. And the ego can really get in the way when we become bombarded by that. Let's go to Taurus. Now, before I continue, at the end of this podcast, I'm going to share a really important story, a parable, a Zen story, that's going to help each and every one of you understand what this energy is all about. Taurus. This one's going to be a little bit more challenging for you because you're going to find yourself feeling that you're more of service to others and others aren't of service to you. This is an energy that kind of rubs you the wrong way. You're going to feel very detached uh, around people. You're going to feel like your value systems aren't in alignment. In fact, you might be sitting down and going, I think I just want to be around people whose value systems are in alignment with mine. You may find yourself looking at your money situation and your financial situation and being quite frustrated with it and feeling like, why do I not make as much money as so-and-so? Why am I not in a position financially like so-and-so? I deserve to earn more money. Now, it's interesting, and I'm going to give you a little tip now. A couple of planets just moved into Capricorn. Again, Vedic astrology. This is called constellation astrology so it's basically where all the planets are right now if you were to look in a telescope from nasa anyways this is a great time if you're in business for yourself up your game this is a time to yeah you're important and how can you up your game financially and how can you take more control over your own business if you're working for someone else after the full moon i would not do this during or before the full moon but next week which would be Monday and Tuesday, go to your boss, talk to him or her about the changes that you would like to make around your financial situation. It'll probably go in your favor. In fact, this is your year, Taurus. If you make sure that you're an individual and you speak up for yourself as an individual, you're not fighting for anybody else or speaking for anybody else or telling them that Mary and Bob feel the same way as you do. It's only individually for yourself and you show up as a unique individual. This is your year to get financial abundance, to meet your needs, your values, and to meet other people that also have the same mm, integrity that you have. So Gemini, 
with this full moon, you're going to find yourself communication issues. Now, this may be if you're looking for a big ticket item for sales, be very careful about purchasing or buying a car this weekend, even if you have problems with yours, which you probably will. Also, be careful with communicating with your um, siblings. This is kind of a sibling rivalry type of energy where all of you are trying to be high up on the on the hierarchy in the family donate domain, even if it's just two of you. Okay, and it may be who has a sadder life than who. It's also about who's being right and who's being wrong. But it seems to be around communication and specifically with family and siblings. Again, if you've got any car issues, I'm not saying not to buy a car, but I'd wait till the weekend is over. Specifically with other technologies as well, such as your computer or your phone, etc. I'm going to go with cancer. Okay, Cancer, this is about money for you as well. Financially, you're feeling quite sad, to be honest with you. There may be some tears that are going to be shed this weekend, but I really want you to get to the heart of this. Are your needs being met in the way that you earn your money? If you are in a situation where you're a stay-at-home mom and, you're, and your spouse is earning the money or vice versa, because you could be a stay-at-home dad, then you want to take a look at are your needs still being met it has nothing to do with i got to go out and start making money for myself or earning a living because i'm not going to have any freedom or a sense of self unless i do so that's kind of the energy and you may have a, a very uh, emotional argument about that which is perfectly fine but since i'm giving you a heads up you may want to just gather your feelings okay your heart center stay in your heart center gather those feelings it's not going to be easy and yes you are important your value systems are important and I want you to stick to that as well but at the same token because this is the energy about me and them you want to take a look at what their value systems are and if they don't match yours this may not end up in a great conversation this does happen without forethought then shelve it until Tuesday when the full moon is over. Now the star of the show, Leo. How are you going to handle this full moon, Leo? <laughs> You're probably going to go out and party. You might even throw a party yourself or a gathering or start feeling like, how come I don't have enough friends? How come I don't have enough family to go to these gatherings? You may even be upset that there was a gathering or a get together that nobody told you about. Feeling like you're detached again from what it seemingly other people have. Now, let's remember you are a romantic at heart and to today in this full moon you're going to feel like it's all about you and it is all about you you are by the way led by the sun and all planets revolve around the sun this is true and you are here to learn a balanced self sense of self-importance now with that being said Take a look at friends that maybe aren't really friends. Maybe there is, you're being fake, you're performing for them. You're being what they want you to be so that you are attractive to them. And I'm not just talking about physical attraction. There's also intellectual, emotional, and I'm always there for you. I got your back kind of a attraction that we want. If we do these things, we feel like people will like us more. So. You're going to be taking a look at that. There's going to be a lot of drama around you, a lot. And you actually might find it kind of entertaining, to be honest with you. But check in with yourself. Do you want to be a part of this drama for entertainment purposes only or not? Think about what the results will be. Virgo. Virgo, you're going to really want to spend a lot of time alone during this weekend. I'm serious. If you try to go out or do anything with anyone, even though you're going to be watching on the sidelines in the bleachers that everybody else having fun and having a blast, and you're probably over exaggerate how much they really are having fun. If you do end up trying to be entertained by just fun, jovial people who are just want to party for the sake of party, you're going to be critical. Uh, you're going to be how don't they get it this is not what life is all about why are they being like this you may even be critical of yourself and there's going to be this push and pull where you want to be a part of the crowd but really you're hesitant on it you know how you can tell 
These are the signs. You stand in front of your closet forever. I can't find anything to wear. And you get totally stressed out. Maybe there's misunderstandings and miscommunications about when it is and how it is and what's going on or am I even invited? If you have any of those signs, then probably you shouldn't go. But if you want to put this to the test, then go with the opportunity to leave. Make sure that you're not getting a drive there with somebody. Have a, a getaway car. Libra, this is a pretty good time for you because friendships do matter and you may find yourself being a little out of balance in the friendship area but on the full moon somebody comes and helps you and supports you now there's a tendency for you to not take that support that can be challenging so if you're going to say no because you're a people pleaser and you don't like confrontation and you think like oh i don't want to put you out of your way oh you don't need to do this for me little old me take it take it and see what it feels like First of all, allow them the opportunity and the gift to be able to help you and support you and see if your needs can be met by just a little gesture. Take it and enjoy it. And you may even connect and make a new friendship. If you do connect, even with a current friendship, family member, even if it's just for five minutes, like we're on the same page right now, sit and enjoy that moment for a second. Remember, I got a Zen story coming up at the end of this podcast. It's going to help all of you. Okay, Scorpio, this one's a tough one. Okay, Scorpio, this one's a tough one because you see below the surface and this seems to be happening in the workplace. If it's not in the workplace and it's amongst your society, so whether you volunteer or it's people in your neighborhood, it seems to be people that are around you. Now, there is some, some drama, quite a bit of drama, going on with a group of people and you with your spidey sense can see below the surface something is amiss something's just not right and you can't quite put your finger on it that's okay do what you need to do with the feeling of it's just not right that might be turning down an invitation or not getting involved with somebody that's upset with the boss or if it gets heated around the table as you're discussing next week's projects you might want to keep your spidey sense to yourself because it will not be well received, at least not until next week. Okay, now we're going to talk about Sag. Sag, you're going to party, 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 hardy, hardy. You might find some difficulty in having some intellectual stimulating conversations with most people, but if you keep it up, you will find that one person. This might be on a social forum. This might be actually at a party, or it might be just when you're walking down the street, walking the dog. You're going to bump into somebody where you're going to have some deep philosophical, stimulating intellectually conversation. It might even be met with and or a slapstick sense of humor, some sarcasm. If you spread your sarcasm and it isn't well received, which it can be by some of these other signs that I'd mentioned that are going to have a hard time with this, then it's probably a good idea to just stop right there. Don't take it personally that they don't get your sense of humor, your wittiness, um, and even dryness at time. They're just not in a good space. Some people are having a real hard time with this full moon, but you're not. You're okay with it. Now your central nervous system might be in high gear. So I would be very careful in taking any kind of substances that is going to contribute to overstimulation in any way. Okay, Capricorn, this is going to be around your philosophy, also your belief system and even traveling. You might find that you're starting to consider another goal. That might involve some higher education. You, you were thinking about it last month, but this month is pretty heavy for you. And when the full moon comes, you might be met with some disappointment through a discussion with a friend or a family who says, you can't do it. Why would you want to do that? I haven't got enough on your plate. Okay, so there is some wisdom in those words. And you might want to take a look at, even if you're triggered, why are you triggered? Maybe you are putting a little bit too much on your plate. Maybe you can go about starting this new project without having a certain type of degree or education or experience. Okay, so use this time to take a look at your philosophy, your belief system about what you want your future to look like. This is also not a good time to book any kind of traveling. I would wait till next week. With communication issues. Now, this may be if you're looking for a big ticket item for sales, be very careful about purchasing or buying a car this weekend, even if you have problems with yours, which you probably will. Also, be careful with communicating with 
your system. And now we have Aquarius. Aquarius, this one's a tough one for you. Uh, it was okay with Leo, but remember how I said Leo, you got to be very careful about the drama. You don't want to make it all about you, even though you've got a sense of importance. Now, Aquarius, you might be on the receiving end of this. You might find yourself that somebody is trying to make themselves more important and they're not thinking about humanitarian issues or humanity. They're not considering how this is going to affect the big picture or others. You might get on a high horse about how this is not conducive for humanity in general, uh, whether it's a, a belief system or a religion or a thought process at work. And uh, there's a lot of psychology involved in this. And this is a really great time for you to spend some inner, some time on your inner workings, on your inner thoughts. What are your fears around these discussions? That's where you start. What is the fear? What is that big picture? I know, deep, but you got this. You guys are the ones that think outside the box. In fact, you guys are the ones that just throw the box away. <laughs> okay. And now, Pisces. Okay, Pisces. This is going to be around relationships. You're going to share with how you feel alone in the relationship. You don't feel connected. That that person has different friends than you have and that person isn't as romantic as you would like them to be, that they're not as spiritually connected as you are and that they just leave you alone and you'd rather them step in and go, hey, I'm going to take you out. We're going to do something. Let's hang out with friends. This is going to be challenging for you. But it's okay because you're actually got a point. You're being very practical and rational about this and you want to create a plan. But first you want to know if you're in a partnership, if that person really wants to work as hard as you are. This doesn't have to be just with intimate partners. It can be with people that you work for, work with. Uh, it could be some legal matters in which you want to take a look at whether they want to put the work into resolving this as much as you do. It can be with a friendship as well. It's in relationships in general. So you don't have a bad idea, but it just might get a little intense on the weekend. In order to handle it, you probably should wait until the energy of this full moon is over, which is next week. Remember, the full moon is February 20th, but it will last a few days before and a few days after this energy. I always recommend that people, this is what I do, take a crystal if you have it and put it in clean water in a clear cup and put it on your windowsill so that the moon can catch it. Even if you've got some kind of a balcony cover over the windowsill, that's okay. The moon's still going to shine on in even if it's cloudy. And then what I do is I drink the water the next day. That's one of my rituals. You can also write a letter of closure to any situation that you would like to have closure on. It might just be an idea, a thought process, a sadness, a hurt, some pain, some family issues, friendship issues, or it might be something more specific of exactly the type of closure you would like to have. Write that down and burn it, literally Put it in your sink and light it on fire and then drop it in a cup of water. Now, of course, I don't want you to hurt yourself or harm yourself. So there are other ways you can rip it up. You can crumple it up and throw it in the garbage. Either way, you just want to dismiss it in general. So are you waiting for the Zen story? Here we go. There was a Zen master who came across a very poor person. And the Zen master had just found a very precious gem. The poor person came up to him and went, wow, what a precious gem you have. You are so lucky. And Zen Master said, oh, do you want it? He's like, oh, yes, I do. He goes, here you go. He walked away, the poor person, the pauper, in glory and gratitude and even a little bit of a snicker, like how lucky I am I to have this precious gem that's worth so much money. Ha, ha, ha. He probably doesn't know how much it's worth. A couple days later, he came up to the Zen master and with the gem, with no intention of giving the gem back, he literally said to him, I don't want to give you this gem back. If you want it, I will. 
but I want a more precious gift from you, if I may. And the Zen master was like, sure, what is that? He goes, what is it in you that allowed yourself to give me such a gem? That's a gift. I want that feeling. I want to be able to give away as you did without forethought or greed or expectations. He wanted that more than the gem. Think about it. I know, it's a bit of a mind bender. Ask HollyHall.com if you want to get a reading. More of this types of videos coming to you soon. Namaste.